So even yes. the previous test was not recorded? No. Um, if I mention that? You mentioned oh. email. I was just making sure we're... we're for the topics are the EDM mailbox, that means the customer orders received via EDI, and we are also going to see uh, how to display customer orders. Yes. So first of all, let's begin with the um, EDI entry of the orders. For this, I will go directly to our EDI mailbox, which is in group 44. Remember that we saw the last session, then in this number two, you can also do the manual orders and the, the entry of uh, orders manually, yes? So when we were on this program, we have first this screen that you see now. And we talked about this, that this is our EDI mailbox processing, yes? If you remember, when we want to add a manual customer order, then we have to press F9 to see the delivery um, master, deliver. and then with F9, I can go back to the mailbox, yes? So, what can I see in this mailbox? In this mailbox, what I can see are the part numbers that have arrived into the system via a, an ID message, yes? What we can see is and we have here an error, error EDI. We can see the EDI plant number, the EDI customer um, shipping point, and an error number, what you can see here. And this is a consecutive number, meaning that if you can see here, you have this part number 6513, 613, 6513, and so on. It's all not most, most of them is exactly the same part number, yes? So, if you hear this one, is the same part number. Always the same part number. And you see here, you have a number 10, you have a number 11, 12, 13, and 14. That means this is all the time that you have received an, an EDI message and you have not integrated into the system. So. Anytime you receive a mes the message or when you want to process the same message many times, then you will always get here the record with this consecutive number, okay? Uh, then I have here the error number. I will talk about these error numbers afterwards. And here we have more than one view. As you can see, we are in view three, but if I press again F10, the view will be changed, and now I will see the logical ID, load and remote. If I press again, 10, I desire number, which I, we, we don't see this information because this might not have been integrated in the system. The customer, the shipping point, F10. Now I get the view number one. Here you have got always the titles, yes, of what you are getting displayed, and so on. You can change the part number, the EDI plant number, and so on. You can always change um, among different views. You also have here in this screen, in this mailbox, a function key F3. And this one, you can look for certain um, messages, yes. You can look for uh, messages for, for a planner, a specific planner. By going through the planner, for example, we put here a planner. Let's see the front. And, and then see there is nothing, yes, because there are no messages for this planner. Okay? So that means when you, when, when you are working with this mailbox, different planners, if you manage, you get into this mailbox, and so that you don't get displayed all the messages for all the planners, you just type in your planner um, code, and then you get displayed all your part numbers. 
Of course, this planner code must be added in the customer and stored data. Yes, so then get displayed here only your parts means master. Yes, so that you get here only the parts master belonging to your planner code. After that, we have here this record type one and record type two. So, with a question mark, I can open the code table behind this, and you can see the box location. Um, this P1 until P10, this is nothing that has to do with a um, sale. This has to do with a purchasing area. Uh, this one as well, this is a um, this aftermarket uh, sales module. So the ones that are uh, relevant for sales tulips is beginning with this number 10, which is an error EDI. And forward, then you will see, for example, for production synchronous, that means something like just in time. Yes, um, just in time process, you get a certain kind of messages just not call for delivery schedule, but some different message. Um, the, the is here it is translated as dispatch note, yes. But it's not dispatch note. This is nothing else than the call off, yes. So for you, it is important to know the number 30 and the number 40, yes. And then you have for blanket orders. Um, for price agreements and so on, which um, you might not be using, not even this one, which is for the ESP process when you are delivering to an external service provider. And here you have some others for just in time and so on. Okay. So the ones that um, are interesting for us is the 10 for error. And we have the 34 call-offs and the 44 delivery schedule. So what does this mean? Um, here, what messages I would like to see. And if I say, for example, 10, 10, 10 it always means I want the messages, messages with an error. And then record type 2, I can say, the messages with error regarding to call off 30. Yes. And now I am just selecting here in the in the mailbox that, as I said, I want to see messages with error, and these messages are only call off. So I enter, and I see I do have some of these call off and they have an error, yes? Why Why I say error, yes? Because it might be possible that just look, for example, for, for yes? The thirties to forties. So I want to see the thirties only for example. Record the valid range. So I can't. So you have to put always error because it doesn't matter that the error, there are some messages where you have error number 000, yes, which is not an error. The ones with 000, 000 here are messages that you set up in the contract that you want to receive them in mailbox, yes. That's why you have 000 and they are not an error. As, uh, as an error, yes? I don't mean to interrupt, but is there a way or a code thing that would tell us that it's um, a curse type error? That it's, sorry? 
A press part. Podemos identificar que el movimiento que ha caído en error es de prototipo. Depending on the part number, you know, you, you know when a part number is a prototype, yes? You cannot identify this in the mailbox, yes? You would have to go to, to might be able to do this, um, to do this, uh, I don't know, you can, you can put it, for example, in the contract and say this is not a, a serial part number, but a prototype, yes? And you can see it in the contract. Normally, yes, for a prototype part number, you have to add another contract. So let's say I have part number one, two, three, four, okay? okay? One, two, three, four will be delivered to my customer A, to my customer B, and this customer B as well. So then you need in that case to have three contracts. Yes. One for part one, two, three, four, customer A. A second for part number one, two, three, four, customer B. And a third one for customer B with a different shipping point. And in contract, you can set up this is a prototype. Yes, and then you would know that prototypes are uh, going uh, in your system, even though they are going to the same shipping point, yes, but in the system you can do it like that, that you say the customer has got one shipping point for prototypes. Yes. <coughs> and that way you would be able to know that. Otherwise, I don't know if, if Brian, you do it in a different way for prototypes. Do you prototype? Well, now prototypes, I believe, um, we usually don't get EDI for prototypes, but we started Honda recently, and, and Honda is doing that. So we're still kind of working through that. Because um, it might be, I don't know about Honda, but it could be also possible that in the EDI message for Honda, there is an specific segment in the EDI message, which is uh, meaning that this is a prototype. Yeah, but this is a very special process that I am not aware about because we are not working with this process uh, with customers here in Europe, but not at least customers that I have. So that's why I cannot tell you. But I could ask maybe Jackie or Christy, yes, um, if they know about that. Do you, do you want to give me one of your prototype parts that you're getting EDI on, and I'll take a look at it for you? Well, actually, uh, I'll get if it is right. We're in Brian. This is training with Honda. And even the ship two might be the same one. They sent, um, they are sending via EDI the requirements for prototypes, and but they're identifying them with, um, for example, for each event, they said this different codes, but this has created a lot of confusion with them. We have two requests to put the code, but the request is so they don't, don't have separate contracts for prototypes, um, so perhaps we have to do that, like set up a different contract in the system, and this is, um, this is happening just with Honda. Yeah, working through that, that's very it's different than anything we've had before. Yeah. And, and for what I know about prototypes, um, <clears throat> knowing how, how it is with Honda, yes, but if you have the same issue with another customer, Volkswagen or, or any other customer, yes, a prototype, you cannot receive a request, yes, for this part number in your normal contract for serial parts, yes. If you're receiving requirements for prototypes, then you create another contract which is going to um, be set up only 
for these prototypes deliveries, yes? And because this is something different than your serial, serial parts, yes? So that would be my recommendation. Without in Honda, I don't know if there is something specific in Honda, um, but in general, for other customers, that's the way you can do this difference that you know, okay, this is a prototype, this goes to uh, the shipping point number two, and serial, serial part numbers are going to prototype, uh, to shipping point one. Or you can even say, at, according to how you are working, yes, you would have to analyze is what is the, the most doable for you, but you could also even think about, okay, I create another customer number, the customer, but for prototype, yes, yes. and you also do your, your contract for this customer, our prototype, your normal customer, serial part, for example, yes. Um, those are um, things that you could do in order to be able to separate prototype from the part. Yes, so as I was telling you here, always when you want to display something, you want to display only color, then you have to put 10, 10, and 30. 10 means the error messages displayed in this mailbox regarding color. Yes, and then why is invalid? Hmm. I'm sorry, something is not working. And then I don't understand. So three again. And I errors for for now for the little scan. Why is it three in Why is that? It's not allowing me. I go back again. It's three. Okay. So what's going on there? Now it works, yes. So you select 10 to 10 is error. Uh, 30 for color. And then here you get displayed only color, yes. If you do 10 to 10 and 40, then you just get displayed delivery schedules, yes. So um, this is select here. If you are looking just for a specific part number, then you type it in here. You have to make the difference. It is part number. Remember, this is exactly the way the part number is being sent by your customer or your part number. Yeah. Or you can look for uh, some um, EDM messages if you have the customer number or customer. So remember, that means your number for your customer or the EDI, the shipping address, EDI plant number, or packing slip number, this is, okay, that's when, um, this, this is when you have a single order, yes? yes? So you can select in this mailbox to for, let's skip this, this is the um, links, as I told you, yes, um, I can have the same part number here different times, always with a different number here, which the first message, the number eight, was the last message that has been received. Now, how can I look at the, at the details for this information? First of all, here are the four possibilities, one, two, four, five, eight, and nine, yes? With number one or two, I can process the message. I will select it with a number one, and I will see what is the problem here. When you have a 1040 or a 1030, the, the problem, but it's not exactly a problem, is that this ED message has not been linked to a contract, 
Yes. So Yes, so uh, some sessions ago that it's 45, I will go back to show you, in the group 45, number 9, you get your contracts. Yes, these are the contracts where I'm setting up, if you remember, the part number EDA, which is very important because if this part number is not the same as in the message, you will not find this contract, yes? So this is what the system looks for when a message comes, yes? A new message comes and is checking EDI number, okay, then this message is mine with this contract for customer one to four, shipping point 30, for example. So, that way, this is working, this allocation. I go back to the 44 number two, which is the mailbox. And then I say number one. And he is going to um, prove me the contract which is matching with it. Yes? In this case, here you can see you have the FC3E and so on. If you go back, that's the part number that I have. He, he, the system has got a match. But in this case, as you can see, the error number is 2678, and this means that you can see I select it again with number one. And what is the problem here? The problem is you cannot match this message with the contract because contract is blocked. As you can see, this L in red. It should be what are your options here? Get into the mailbox and you see, okay, that's the problem. The cost is blocked. So then, why is it blocked? Is it because something changes? The, and then we have to to block this one and create a new shipping point. And it's been created. Yes, you have to check out why is this blocked, and then you have to add a new one so that the system can find a match with a contract, and then you will be able to receive your EDI orders. Otherwise, as long as you don't do this match, you will not be able to receive the EDI. Yes? The number one, the number two, is for processing the messages. Then, if remember, we also have a number four. What happens when you select with number four? You are erasing this message from the mailbox. Yes? If those are messages you don't need to have in the mailbox, and reason you know already, yes, this is blocked and this is correct, but the customer keeps sending us these um, delivery schedules. But we don't need to integrate them in the system. When you are sure about this, then you just have to erase them with a number four. Yes? But if you have to clear out something, then you leave them, and once you have cleared this out, then you will be able to link them to a contract. Okay? Um, then up also the option number five, and this is a a good and an important one because with this one you can display the message, yes? um, the information about the message. So here the information about the company, if there is a planner set up, and then here you can see yes, the company the company group. Remember the company group is very important for the EI translation. They have the part number, the plant, the customer shipping address, and so on. Uh, the local and remote for the communication. This is, these are master data for the EDI. I will go through this afterwards just a little bit so that you have an idea. And then you can see sequence number is the number 10. Yes, because before this, we have other messages that were coming to our system. And when was it created? This one is from February 6. Okay, the error number, you can see it here. That's the one that you can see here at the first screen. But the most important here with number five is that you can see what this error means. In this case, the 2678 means can allocate record EDI shipping schedule. That means, as I told you before, this cannot allocate 
this message because if you remember, our tract is blocked. And as long as it is blocked, it is not going to be able to allocate it. Okay? okay? Number five, then you will know what is the error. In this case, 2678, the cases are, it can be allocated. Yes, see, for example, this one, you can see it is exactly the same that you have a cheese blow. It could also be the possibility that the DI port number is not matching, and that's why it's not finding the correct uh, contract yet. You could also, for example, erase this selection and then press enter, and then you get display more contracts, yes? And then you can have a look at this and, and find out, ah, okay, all the are docked, or this is the one that I need, yes? And if I go back, Nothing happens, yes, I go into the record again with a one and the selection is still there. Yes, I just I just can't erase because if I leave a selection here, she's going to display me only the current information matching this select okay. So as I told you you can erase and you can see ah oh, I have another contract for this part number, but now it's A B. And that the system did not find it. Okay, so this is the way you can um, try to find out what happened with this message. I will go a little bit forward and see if I find any other message code different than 2678. For example, we have a 2642. Yes, select it with a number five. They can see that the record cannot be allocated because the, the, the data is not matching. Now we'll try to find out. They do have the information here about this message. If I go back with F1 and I select it with a number one, what we, is the same, yes, this, this is not matching with the EDI part number. He's not finding a contract with this EDI part number or the contract is blocked. I go with F1. As I told you, this is this is a very good um, something that can help you with number five to find out what the problem is. But mostly also, if you select it with a number one, then you can see more or less what is the situation for this record. And you can see if you have the part number, for example, here you have the EDI part number with this. You have made on from sales, you know what is the part numbers that you are going to deliver, and so you can find out maybe the engineering index is not the correct one. The customer sent a wrong part number because it has changed, and we don't have the data, the master data, and the contracts yet in the system, and that kind of problems, okay? okay. Forward and see if I find something different. Not, not been able to match. Ah, here we have something different. So, 62, for example, I selected with number five. And it's telling me no delivery note exists which corresponds to the data entry. So, then with this record, the problem with this record is. It has been allocated. If you see that the tile view is a little bit different than the one before, you also see general information, but you can see as well uh, information about the part number, the customer, the shipping address, and a little bit different, yes? But here the main problem is that what happens? I receive a daily schedule from my customer. If a shipment which has not arrived yet my customer and before my shipment arrives to the customer, the customer is sending me a new delivery schedule. In this new delivery schedule for the customer, the last shipment received was the one before my US shipment. But for my system, yes, the last shipment was the one which was already on its way to my customer. So, in cases, then the, the data for the delivery note is not matching. 
Okay. Yes. So the customer, the last delivery note was the 555, and for me, in my system, is the 556. Yes. That's why we have this kind of errors because this this data is not matching. If I go back with a number with F1 and I select it with a number one, it's not a big delete uh, exists which corresponds to data entry. Okay. I selected it with one. Oh, if you remember when we saw the um, after order manual entry, you might it's that we were um, looking at and you that the information here. When you're going to do a manual entry, you don't need anything. This part is only used or is only um, with information when it's a EDI message. So in this EDI message sent by my customer, the last delivery note was the five three four two hundred and fifty pieces. Yes. Yeah? So if you remember, in this screen, I have the key from F8, and this one I can see the deliveries. So I press F8, and I can see that for me, the last delivery note was the 72377, and for the customer, was a long time ago, I don't even have it here, I don't know what um, as you can see, I cannot go back. I cannot get 53073, but it's not here. You can see, you know, don't this last um, deliver note here. The last one was this one, and that's why I go back with F1. That's why this message is coming into the mailbox, because he's looking for, again, for 72377 as last delivery note, and the customer sent this information. So what do, can you do in these cases? In these cases, what you can do is you can just erase this information here because it's not matching. And if you press enter, enter, you can receive your requirements from customer, yes? So, you have, look, before that, that, these ones are the, the old information, the, the last um, requirement. And in common, as you can see, you have for April 10, 250, and for um, June 250. In the new, the the customer is ordering only the ones for June. Maybe it was um, this was set. So here you can see yes yeah, how it was before and how it is now and what changes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. In this case, I could if I hit F7, then I am receiving the requirement. And what will happen? This issue will be erased, and now I will only have a requirement for. June for 250 pieces, yes? I am not going to press F7 now, as this is your uh, real environment, and I don't I don't know if you want to receive this requirement or not. So I am going back with F1 now, okay? Again, F1, and I sell it again with the number one. Such comes, and then you see the information is there again. You can you can select them with one and press enter to see what the situation just go back with this one so that you don't change anything and the record is still here. Okay. So what we saw is we have the number one, the number two, the number four to raise the number five to display the information and mostly also to display the the error message that you get. It, we, to add a comment, you can you could enter here a comment. Yes. Uh, let's say you are a planner, you are 
just working, processing your mailbox, and you find out that here the problem is no contract um, in system. Yes, you can add here an information. For next day, when you rework your mailbox, then you can display this information and, and you don't have to find out again, but you will know exactly, ah, that was the part number without the contract, for example, yes? That's what this function is for. And we have the number nine. In the number nine, as you can see, you can see a summary of this from your customer. Yes, you have the information about the requirement. Here you can also see what was the last delivery note that the customer is sending you or taking into account. The quantity, yes, and the relative number. And then here you can see the requirement for the next date or, or the requirements which are being sent within this delivery. Yes. So this this is the information as we receive it from the customer. As a, if you can see here, you have got a um, F15. Well, for F10, you can change the view as you can see. The home here. And if you get down, you will see the completely day. You see? This is. This is than only one screen. So I would page down, page up, page down, and you can see the whole quantities that are required within this delivery schedule. Yes? So this you can display with a number nine. Okay? Here, page down, you can also see the quantities all included in this delivery schedule. Okay? So I have also this F14. Yes, with EDI data. So I press shift F2, which is F14. What I see is the EDI message. So when we talk about EDI message, you have to think about this. We format in turn in the system, which is of it, okay? But the customer is saying, us, I receive Impact or anti X12. Yes? So what happens? The system is going to generate an intern format, which is this one. This one is our internal format for the system. And then through a translator, the system will change this information in fact a ready fact method into an anti X12 message. Yes? So what you see here is our internal um, format. In format, you can see the information contained in the message. Yes. Maybe um, with with sometimes an experience, you will know, for example, that the um, ARD is the article description segment. Yes, with a number five, you can display it, and then you will see here you have information about the part number. For example, or you can page page up, or you can so shift F12 to again. You can see, for example, in this segment, you can find information about the consignee and all this information, and so on. In this segment, for example, you can see the remains that you've got here. Okay. So this is what was translated because in this case we received a message we are not sending. We received a message in ANSI 12 or any fact and then it was translated in this format, which is internal format, so that after this you can see it like this in your system. Okay? It with the EDI data. And here I can press also F10 to see the EDI standard method, which is the raw message that you receive from your customer. This is the way you receive the message from your customer. With F10, I can do a little bit reorganization here to see the, the information different or to see each segment here listed. With page, you can continue seeing the segment for this message and so on. So this, the message, how the, the customer is sending 
with this message translated in our system, and this is the message integrated in our system, yes, which is in our mailbox because the if case specific the delivery note is not matching with my last delivery. Okay, so something that um, you have to see. Um, like this. I would like to show you this. So this general information for you to understand better the system in, in EDI issues. And this is the way this goes. Yes? You have your customer here. Your customer is sending you message which is received by a monitor in your system, this one is going to, or through the van, maybe, because um, in, in the US you work more with van, then it comes into your system through an auto X connector, or you have, you don't need to know exactly what connector, yes, or you are not technical, um, and then, yes, the issue comes into your system, and what happens? In the system, there is a job which is running, in, and this message is going to read the message header record of your customer. It's going to determine the company group. Do you remember that I told you in the customer's master, the company group is a very important information, like this 801 or 805 and so on. That's very important because the system to read the message is going to determine the company group with our master data in EDI, and according to this company group, the system will convert the message and proceed according to a sequence which is defined in this code table. This is a little bit technical, but this is just for you to understand why the master data that I am adding in the system is so important. And what if it's Chrysler and I put 807, it is not going to work at all because 807 is another company group and not Chrysler, for example. You know, I, I am not sure if 801 is Chrysler, but just as an example, okay? So this is then what happens in our system through this job. The message is read, the determine the company group, converted, and processed through the sequence. And then integrated and transferred in our system in the corresponding files so that you get it displayed in the, okay? And the same happens when you are sending information to your customer, to your suppliers. Yes, when you're sending ASN, you are creating a shipment, you are creating an ASN, you are um, creating this information in different files in the system, which is going to be processed through sequence, is going to be converted with the, with the company group, and then is going to be translated according to this company group so that the message looks the way like BMW wants to have it or Honda wants to have it and so on. And then it goes through the connector to the van and then read your customer. Yes, yeah, so this is the way the information is going into your system and going out of your system. So it's a general information that you can understand better the way the system works. Um, then I have here to show you also. I have a little bit further. So you can see the messages that you can find in this mailbox. Yes, you have also a 0545. The selected delivery schedule is blocked. Let me show it. There's two, two, 632, no delivery note was found. We entered data. The 3060, the container quantity is not matching the delivery note quantity if you are working with rounded containers. The 2678, the record cannot be allocated to a uh, contract. And 642, the record cannot be allocated because he is not finding matching data that corresponds to the EI plant and the the shipping address of and file name of your customer. 
Yes, these are the errors that you can find in the mailbox. So as you can see, you have some of them. And also, for example, this error 000, which is no error. Yes, in this case, if I select it with number one, then you will see, in this case, you don't even have matching data. The, the customer is not sending you in this. In this, I will select it with five, so that with men, so that we have a rest, uh, summary of this. You can see the message, the message that you're receiving from this customer is containing this information. So here the question is, maybe it's not being translated correctly or the customer is not sending this information at all. So if you go further, of course, right now it's good that you learn how to, to work with this mailbox. But if you want to check further, then you can have a look at the, so we then I look at the raw information sent by the customer. And if you have guidelines, then you can go to your guideline and see in what segment is sent the, the last delivery note and the quantity and so on. And you look for the second and you see, oh, okay, that's true. He didn't send this information or he did send it, but it was not translated in my system correctly so that I cannot see it in the screen of the, sorry, of the delivery schedule. Okay. Now I'm going back with F1, but it's taking a little bit time. So, or if it's too fast, let me know. Is it until now? Do you understand what I have explained so far? Uh, okay, now let's continue. So, as I D000 is no, no, um, error. What happens in this case? Yes, we will find it out. I will give part number and I'm going to another session so that you can see it. So, yeah. so I go to the 45 number nine, which is our contract. And I am going to look for a contract for this part number. So I don't find it. The partner is this one. You have to put it in the customer part number, not our part number. Ah, I got your part number. I copy it here. And I also want to see what customer it is. You can see here I have your internal part number. I have here your customer and your shipping point. So I can't look for exactly for this part number. Yes? So what I did here is I looked exactly for this contract for this part number. Yeah, so I looked for the part number specifically, the con the customer and the shipping point. Now but with the one and that's this one. Oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to look for this one. <laughs> I'm not it correctly. So that's another part. Oh, no, that's the that's the correct one. Yes. Okay, so I Exactly for this part number, which has got zero zero zero. Now, what's the reason why this record is in this mailbox with no error of zero zero zero? You will see it now. If I get into the contract, you will see that you set up in EDA transfer moved to mailbox. If you remember, here we have got different options. So that's number one, no copy the when you don't want to receive the requirement. You have number three, automatic transfer. That means when the requirement comes and the data is matching, then it will be uh, integrated automatically. But in this case, you set up in your contract, move to mailbox. That means no matter if it's matching or not, you have to go to the mailbox. 
entry box. Why? Because you want to have a look at this um, requirement before you integrate it in your system, or maybe because you didn't know what this exactly means, now you know it, and you can change it, and so on. So that's why all messages with 000 is not a, a message with error, but a message which is set up in the contract that has to go to the mailbox. All the other one is, is um, the first one is an error, yes, but not in this case. So this is the errors that we have here. We have another one. For example, I want to know what is this 1855 with a number five I selected and I see current month update necessary. So with and then I can see I prefer to look at the requirements that that are here and you can check it and if you think this is okay then you can press F7 and you have integrated the and the order. Yes, I I am not going to press it because I want to change anything here. So I will press F3 now here all of them. I will for call off call off for this delivery. Okay. Now these ones are only call off. I like cannot a record. Let me with number one. So same. Yes, you have a lot of a lot of um, contracts where you have a contract block. Which I don't know. Can someone tell me what is happening here? Is it something you don't know about, or you don't know why this is here? I think. Oh, okay. Well, this is a, this is a Mexican part number, but it's for Valstring, so I wouldn't know. So you now, now you know, yes. You, how you can see what is the error message? Yes. When I select it with one, I see the contract is blocked. Yes. It's still a part number that we are not delivering anymore, and that's why the contract is blocked. But the customer is still sending requirements that we don't want to integrate in the system. That you can go and you can change the contract that you don't want to receive this message or. You can just erase these messages with a number four. If you are sure that you don't need need them in your system, you can erase them. Now I can tell, for example, here you have the number 10, the number 11, the number 12, the 13, 14. So here you have um, times a message for this part number that you're not integrating at all in your system. Yes. So you have to go and check what is the reason why this is happening. Then click this out and decide is this staying here or do we have to raise it or what is the the situation for this, yes? If because you can see you have several records here in your your mailbox. And the best way to work with this so the 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 thing is this is just the mailbox in order to see where we have an error, where is master data missing, where is data matching, yes? And the objective of this mailbox is that it is reviewed daily or weekly as, as you wish. I don't know how often you get EDI messages or not, yes? But this has to be updated, yes? The objective is that this mailbox is empty because that you have integrated all your messages in the system or you have identified what you don't need to have here. Yes, this is very important that you understand what is this mailbox saying me and how I can proceed in order to integrate the messages or erase them or whatever I have to do to have a mailbox empty. That I have workman mailbox, I have everything I need for requirement. Otherwise, it's not a good overview of your requirement because you don't know if if it's something that you are missing. Yes, maybe 
the customer is expecting you to ship something and um, you don't, or you don't have this autom automation in your system and you have to do a lot of manual work because you are going into the website of the customer to check the requirements and enter them manually. And it makes no sense that you work with the AI if you are doing a lot manually and spending a lot of time. I don't know what is the situation in your plant yet, just to mention this. Then this is the way we work with our mailbox. And remember here, I not find any message where I can see a contract that I can select. For example, here we have several contracts, but no contract. I can say, okay, this one is not blocked, then I can integrate it here. The next step in this case would be to select the correct contract as long as, as it is active, and then press enter. In that way, you could do match of this um, message. Um, now that would be good if you had an example, but I don't have any example at all. Um, I propose, if it's okay for all of you, that we do a 10 minute break. And in the meantime, I will look in my documentation for some screen so that I can show you how it looks like the next steps when you find more data matching and you can integrate in a message. Is that okay for you? Yes. Okay, so 10, 10 minutes break and then you come back. Okay, you. Here I've got an example. Yes? This is our um, message in our EDI mailbox. We have got uh, our message 2644. This is not um, matched in the system yet. yet. That means that the first time that this message is coming into the system. So I will scroll down. And now I select it with a number one. Then get display all the uh, contracts that might be matching with this method, which is the same that when I put here a number one and then display the contract, yes, that's exactly the same. The only thing is that in your case you have blocked contracts, yes. So find the contract I am looking for and I select it with a number one. With this step, I am linking, remember, my EDI message to my contract for the first time so that the next messages, if I set it up like that in the system, come, are integrated automatically in the system. So I select, and then the next screen is showing me the operation of EDI allocation to the master data. That means he's telling me in your in your match you have um, company group 001, and in your master data you also have 001. The number is this one, and it has to match exactly with the one in your contract. The number has the one of your EDI message with the one of your master data. How does it know this information? I have a contract with customer 381958, and this customer has got in the customer master one shipping point with the plant number, and that's the way the system knows, okay, that's the master data, that's the, the EDI message master data. Then the shipping address in the system as well has to match. It's the 001, it's the 001. My ID local is this one and remote is this one. This is not um, very, this is just matching information about the communication. Here it is not comparing anything, but as you can see, the integration happens first with the company group, then the part number, EDI part number, that's what I telling you in the contract, the EDI part number is very important. And then it's uh, matching with the plant 
now and the shipping address. These are the key data that the system is using to do the match of an EDI message and a contract. So, and this data is um, correct. Then I press F7, and then I have linked the contract, this EDI message to this contract, and then this core will disappear of your mailbox, okay? Because now it's integrated. If you set up in the in the contract, yes, that the um, requirements land your email box, then reach to your mailbox, yes. So what is? If you remember the contract, again, show you that you know what I am talking about. I move yes, after if I set move to mailbox after doing the linking here, the EI job will continue running and will process this message now that it's matched, and then it will go again to the mailbox because I said in the contract, go to mailbox. So then you would have to go to the mailbox again in order to integrate the requirement just by selecting with one, enter an F7 to save the new requirement, okay? But I said here number three, that means uh, integrate automatically, let's see the option three, automatic transfer, then after doing this matching, the EDI job will continue running and then will integrate the MR order to the contract without going again to mailbox and that I have to integrate it manually. If this matching data also matching, because remember last uh, shipping note and so on has to match as well, and so on. So after I do this link, of an EDI message to one contract in the master data and to report if added. Yes, and it is, has got this format, OFTP. Yes, what does this mean? This, this is the link that I am doing of, with this customer number which has got this EDI shipping point and um, EDI uh, company number, yes? So, I'll show you this. Because in case you did a wrong matching of the contract, yes? That after you realize this, for example, this requirement is being integrated to the wrong customer or to the wrong shipping point, then the way to correct this kind of incorrect linking is going to the EDI master data and raising the record. And raise this record. What happens? The next message that comes will go into the mailbox as if it's first time. And I have to match it again. Okay? This happens, for example, when you select it and you don't check here that the master that is matching and you press F7, you generate a false link. And then that's why sometimes you have the problem, the requirement is coming into a wrong contract. Yes? How to correct it? As I told you, you go to the EDI master data with the customer number and the shipping point if you have it here. You look for the OFTP record with the matching the company and shipping point, and then you raise it with four, and then you can receive again and again your message. Where is this EDI master that I will show you now? This is master data you find in, in group 32, option one. So you set up all you are sending. What you are sending normally. You need uh, um, to something you so that an ASN is created, for example, and sent via EDI. 
two regions, you don't have necessarily to, uh, to, to adhere master data. Yeah? Because remember that this master data is being created by the system. You see, I, 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 I this is what it looks like. These entries done by you in the system for all the um, methods that you are receiving or sending. And if I press F10, Another, you will see the Nazi here, this OFP right, sorry, and then see this OFTP. Yes, but it has to be for receiving. For example, here you only see one, one which is the, the EDI, but here you have more information. Yes. So, example, this is the link for this link from Daimler for this EDI plant and this um, shipping point. Yeah. All these OFTP um, records are created, I created after this matching in the system. Again, if you match something incorrectly, you go here, you look for the incorrect matching and raise it with force, and what happens next time the message is coming into the system, it will be received as if it's first time and has to be linked to the correct construct. Do you questions regarding this? Uh, with the comment, Ryan, and we don't have access to this. I said this is something that I set up myself. You guys don't have to do this. Okay, um, that's what I was thinking, yes, that um, you must have to do uh, something with the master data because this is also something sensible. And I guess in this case here you depend on um, so, uh, your colleagues in the U.S., I guess. Yes, Brian? They have an incorrect linkage uh, or something like that, then you just support them, yes? Right. I usually ask them if they... Uh... They lit up and try to match, and things don't match. Then let me review it first, so I can figure out what's wrong. Okay, but anyway, I think it's interesting for you to know how the system works. Yes. yes. Do I need to show uh, the EDN mailbox or in, um, outgoing incoming messages, or they don't have access to this as well? This okay. can see if. Uh, has yes. been accepted or rejected. Exactly. Okay, so then I will go um, into this. Also, um, I hope this is all clear, yes. The most important thing here, when you are matching or when you are linking an AI message to a contract is that you really have a look at this, that all the data is matching, yes? Not just just um, uh, select with number one, enter F7, and that's it, yes? You have to, to pay attention to what you are linking with. Okay, and remember, if if you don't know, uh, you can also go to the to the contract and check. For example, in these screens, you can you can display your contract. Let's see if it's possible because here are all blocks. But if you go here with the number one uh, row. And you can display this one with a number five. Okay, but you don't see it. Just the, the requirement. So you you can go then to the to the con, to the contracts. Yes. How do you know which contract is this specific? You can customer and the part number, and then try to look a little bit for more information going to the contracts and see. What is the thing that you have here? Yes. Yeah? In this case, for example, here I could also she's only finding this contract which is blocked, yes, and I showed you that before. With F3, I display the select and if I raise the selection, then he's going to show me all all contracts for this customer or for or for all customers. Or I can do F3 select again and say, okay. Uh, the part number was wrong, then I look for the correct one, and then I can integrate it, yes? But remember, the, the matching data must be matching. 
I'll show you here, okay? okay. So <clears throat> now let's go to our in outgoing EDM messages mailbox, which is there to number three. Here you can see all the messages that goes that go out and go into your in your system. Yeah. So, I have yes? a question about the for the for the mailbox. I have one number that I don't, I don't I cannot figure out why it is we can cut. Um, look at this. You mean in the ADI mailbox, yeah? And uh, support, one. Uh, what part number? Is the EDI part number or part number? I have the word number. There? Of course. Yeah. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Okay. It's five zero one two three thousand please. No, it's W and then C. I will say and fast. Mejor. Cinco cuatro. Ajá. Cero uno. Cero F. Cero, ¿ok? No, 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 Tres páginas, ahora me voy a salir otra vez y, y luego a entrar y lo entremos. A ver, ¿cómo se página? Siete, está en la séptima. ¿Ya lo vieron? Ajá, cero diez. Este no es el primero. Ok, vamos a ver cuál es la situación aquí. So first, I select it with a number five, and I will see that it cannot allocate record EDI shipping schedule. Okay, that's the message that it says. So I select it with a number one, and then I see that's exactly the same. Look, you have here this part number, and the contract is blocked, yes? Now let's go to another session, and let's look for this part number for the contract. I go to the 4509, and I'm going to look for this part number. I'm not finding it. Let's look for this part number few. So got some Five zero ten. You see, triple U C zero F. There is something not matching with the part number. Let's look like this for it. I've got, for example, the five four zero one three. W, then you have V, zero, F. You are already in F. And you see any contract valid which got this. Yes. What would be here? The, the, the problem here is this is not matching any of your master data because remember that he's always going to look for this number. 
Yes? Indeed, your part number EDI. And there's no contract in the system where the part number EDI is 0F. So that's why the system is not finding anything at all. So what you have to do here is to create the corresponding contract. First of all, I don't know if this 5401103WZ0F has got already an internal part number from you. If it's not like that, you have to create an internal part number for you with this number, part number customer. And then you have to go to the contract and you have to create with F6 or can copy an existing one. You have to create a contract for the new part number with the index S for the customer. I don't know if it is the customer, the copying point. You create contract and then when you go here, yes? Ese es el número MUVEA, es el 619205. Ok, perfecto. 619205. Ok. Ah, uh, COF, COF, ¿cuál es? Eh, la edición es el 4. ¿Cuál de estos era este? Sí, segundo. Tienes que ver, por ejemplo, qué número de planta y qué número de, de cliente es. ¿sí? ¿Cuál sería aquí? El shipping point. Termina en 005. Termina en 005. Um, uno, ¿Cuál? La página que estás en el mailbox es el Ah, perdón, perdón, perdón. Este no es claro. Ah, esa, esperen, esperen, esperen. Era siete. Ok. Era. Ah, ese número aparte es el 6192-06. Que es el que. Ah, ok, 6192-06. Y entonces tenemos el número de parte E. El UC. Y. ¿El sistema que está haciendo? ¿El sistema? O me, o me equivoqué, espérenme, déjenme verlo otra vez, porque. No sé si es el número de parte, ¿no? Sí, sí, sí. Es el nombre de parte, ok. V Y 0 F, ok. ¿Cuál es el correcto? Porque aquí tienen, bueno, V no, ¿verdad? Es Nissan. ¿Cuál de estos dos? Uno. Primero, este es el shipping point 3. Y es es point 5, ¿sí? Aquí la pregunta es, ¿cuál es el correcto? Averiguarlo. Mm, me voy a ir a ver ahora el maestro de clientes, ¿ok? Dijimos, dos es el mismo cliente, ¿correcto? Pues me voy a anotar, es el 305-772. El 5 y el 3 creo que era, ¿verdad? Exactamente. Ahora vamos a ver al maestro de clientes en el 8. Ok, 3 para ver los puntos de descarga que tengo aquí. ¿sí? Y tengo 3. Si se en el 3, bueno, con, con los, el 3 tiene en, en address N. 
Y hay plant N. N. El sistema no lo va a encontrar porque N no es el, el número de plantas, ¿sí? Ahora voy a ir al, al mensaje que nos enviaron, que es este. Y hay plant number. ¿Eh? Este número es el IDI plan number. Es tienes que poner el shipping correcto, que yo no sé si es, si es este o si es el 5, ¿sí? Porque el 5 también está nada más con R y R. Entonces tú tienes que decirme, ¿cuál es que primero? ¿Es el 3 o es el 5? Y que sea, le tienes que agregar los datos correctos. Porque recuerda, este es el 5 para ti, pero para tu clite tiene un número 009, etc. Tiene que uh, hacer el match con el lens que tienes aquí en Shipping Address. ¿Sí? Que es el Shipping Address. Lo tienes que poner aquí bien. ¿Sí? Y entonces, una vez que tengas bien el shipping address, el sistema va a ir... ¿Por qué estás en este, en este ejemplo que me estás mencionando? ¿Qué pasa? El sistema está encontrando pues, el company group, está encontrando el EDI part number, que sí está, pero no está encontrando el plant number. Y entonces, ahí es donde se queda atorado porque no encuentra con qué hacer el link. Una que cambie tus datos maestros en el en el shipping point correcto, ¿qué va a pasar? Cuando tú selecciones aquí con uno, lo primero que te va a enseñar aquí va a ser el correcto. ¿Sí? El, el te va válido. ¿Ok? Hola. El problema. Pero ya viste, ¿cómo, cómo puedes? Voy a mirar el inglés otra vez. ¿Sí? But now I've seen here how you can find it out. What is the problem? You have to check the information that you have. In this case, the EDI plant is this one. Then you go to your customer's master. You check your shipping point. First error is you have nowhere the correct shipping point because I don't think the shipping point is only one capital letter yet. So you have to check. Maybe you don't use all these shipping points yet, but you have to check the ones that you are using to um, put the correct information for the shipping address so that the system finds the correct matter data contract for these messages that you are receiving. And you can see you have got one, two, three, four, five times you have received this message. Yeah? So you can, integrate, uh, you can integrate one, and once you integrate it, the other ones will be gone, yes? Yeah? But this is very important. That, that it is clear now for you how the system is looking for the matching data, company group, EDI part number, plant number, and shipping address. If in case shipping address and plant number is the same, yes, as we can see when we select it with five, we have plant and they are not sending anything at shipping address. So you, only if you change this this uh, plant number, then you will be able to integrate it in the system. Yes. Just have a look at this maybe during the day. And if if you try to do it and you are not successful, maybe we can have a look at that tomorrow in our next session. Okay. But for me, the most important thing is that it's clear for you how the system is doing the matching and what you have to check. Uh, when you have messages that you don't know how to integrate. Is there for everybody? Yes. Okay, I'm going then. Um, I'll continue with our EDI mailbox. Three, the group 32. And you might have seen before, in the screen you can see um, beginning date, all the received and you have sent. Okay? Here you can always um, select, if you put a number one, 
Then you're looking for messages from a customer. If number two, then you will look for just two suppliers. So look, if I put number two here and I do question mark here, he is going to redirect me to the supplier search. You see? I go to F1, and if I put here a number one, then he's going to redirect me to the customer master. Okay? So this is just general information. I don't know if you have if you have EDI with supplier, uh, but don't look like um, zero to what is it today twelve fifteen. You have EDI with suppliers, I would say yes. So number one, then you can select here what customer I want to see. For example, I want to see this one, Cryer Mexico. Then I select it. I don't want to see date, but I want to see all messages for this customer. Then you can see here, I want to look for all messages sent. Or, uh, or read messages. Yes? And then the application here, you will look for the message that you are looking for. For example, if it's an ASN, then you have here send, and you would have to look here for an edit. Yes? That's, sorry, that's number one here. That's our ASN. Okay, so now we get display only all ASN for Chrysler. Yeah? If I always, never ever selected with a number one here, yeah? Because you can see you have these options. But please be very careful with this mailbox. If you select here with a number one, you resend the message automatically. So never select with number one. Yes. Number two, you can see the information about the EDI master data, where you can see, for example, your company group, um, this information about the communication. And here you can see the last step of processing. Well, this is technical information. You don't need to know that. But the important thing here is you can see with a number five, then if you're looking for, for example, your customer is telling you, I did not receive uh, the ASN of yesterday. I don't know if he's giving you any information or he just tells you, I don't receive your ASN yesterday, yes? So then you go here and you select, I want to see all the ASN sent to Chrysler Mexico. And then you select it with a number five. Here, you can go and say, um, look, for example, for the document number. So you see, ah, yes, this is the document number that I sent today. And this is my message. My message is green. That means it's okay. It left the system and I did send my ASN. But be careful because the fact that the message is green here doesn't mean exactly that it did was sent uh, that it was sent to the customer yes? because remember that between our system and the van we have monitor yes so always when you have problems when information is not reaching you or not reaching your customer the way when you are sending something to the customer first you check here the message left yes next step Check the monitor. I don't know if you know the monitor. Maybe you have to call Brian and say, can you check if this message left? Next step, the van. You can call the van and say, please check if this message left, yes? But if the van tells you, no, I not receive your message, and you go here and you see it's green, then the problem is in the monitor. And you have to check the monitor if it left the monitor, yes? So these are the, the different steps that you have to when you get information that your customer did not receive the information. Yes? Do you know the monitor? Or do you know that uh, maybe only you, Ryan, know the monitor? Most I do. Um, they'll call me if they don't, if I have a call from the customer saying they never received the ASN. I usually do the legs okay. and try to figure out what's wrong. Okay, but anyway, now you know the steps, yes, and um, you say, Brian, the message left 
the system and she can take then the next step which is the monitor or or you take with the van yes so this is the way you can look for information here now remember your ASN is AVF and if you are looking for receive messages you have, for example, you have Colos, yes, which is um, this 863, is that one? Sorry, I don't know the codes exactly for, for M612. You have the daily, yes, which is the, the delivery schedule. These are the Colos. And what do you have? Okay. Take up. So let's see. I've got this is our uh, these are confirmations I guess. Um, you see you have some it's but they're not always named a series, yes. Um that is depending on the format that you are sending. But can you see it here? For example, this X means that it is an M612, yes? You need to go a lot in detail with this, Brian, or try to explain why the names are not matching with A30 and so on. I know. I wouldn't cover this. It'll be more confusing than... Yeah, I think the same, yes. Yeah. So if you are looking for messages for a customer, just select the customer received or sent, and then you will see what are the messages that are being sent, yes, because sometimes it's call off, sometimes it's 8 day or 860 something and so on. Yes, because this is depending on the way the master data is set up in the EDI master data, okay? So this is, the explanation for this is that we have one format in turn, and remember, we have our ODET format, and we have to translate to external formats for the customers, yes? And according to this, um, there is a um, relation that it's done, and that's why when it's an ESN, it's always sent like AVI, X, EDACT, EVO, it is MC Express. But you don't need uh, to, to understand this uh, part, but just to know how to look for information for the messages of the customer or that you are sending or receiving, yes, with a number five. And with F10, you can also see exact information that left to your customer if you would like to, to do a search or a research or something like that. But I guess in this case, um, here you depend more on, on Brian. Um, do you have any questions so far? So now I'm going to show you, um, we have seen already a little bit about this. I will show to display um, customer orders. For example, you can display customer orders. Uh, as you remember, if you are in the contract, you can, you can go with a, with A, and there you can see your customer orders. Or you can go to the 44 number 2, F9, Enter, and then here also you can with an sorry that was the oh this for five here you could get displayed your custom orders yes and this is a bad example because there's no requirement F three to select only with requirement, then I, oh yes, from last time with a number five, you can look here for the requirements and you will see, okay, these are the requirements. These are the requirements um, with three, if you remember, you can see here you only display delivery schedule because you've got number one. If you see call off, number two, and you see call off, if you want to show you this last one. And with the number three, you can see the liver scales and call off, mix each column, yes? So this is the way you can uh, display your 
um, you got to order yes? So way of displaying customer orders if you go to display customer orders. Number 16. And the screen looks exactly like the other two ones that you know when you are entering manual orders or when you are uh, creating contracts. In this, I will select with every, uh, it's already selected only with requirements. I can select it with a number five, and it's the same screen as I showed you before in the um, creating uh, the manual entries. Yes, with a shift F4, which is F16. Yes, you can see the total requirement. Which means for this shipping point is this total requirement for this shipping point, for this shipping point, and then the total is this. In this case, we only have one shipping point, so we have only one grand total. But depending on uh, how many shipping points, then you could see the, the, the um, complete requirement for this part number. Okay? okay. We have the history, which is F17. As far here, as you can see, you have all the um, delivery, delivery, sorry, the requirements that you have received from your customer. Yes, EDI or manual entries. You remember these are the ones that I created manually the last session. So you can have a look at this with number five, and you will see how it looked like. How it looked like, for example. The requirement of uh, December, uh, no, sorry, June the 12th, with a five, I can display it and I can see, okay, in June, they have only order 100. But then, uh, in June 12th, 6, and June 12th, 2012, they change, uh, it's still only 100. And this is some change and so on. You can see exactly the delivery, the, delivery, the requirement in that date. Okay? How on this date then your so only number one you can see it, okay? And you have got here. Sorry, you can also uh, master and your info tool if you would like to information. Okay, so here the history of all your uh, orders. Um, then you could see here the contract which is F6, uh, sorry, F6. You can the price agreement with a number five. You can see what is the price and for information about this contract. Yes, we have seen all this. And with F8, the deliveries that you have done for this part number, <coughs> information that you can see when you are displaying customer orders. Um, do you have any question, Brian? Is that okay? Is there something that you maybe wanted to see and I am forgetting, or is it okay what we have seen so far today? Okay. I don't, unless Jill does. Okay. Um, there, we we have a question. Tengo una vez que estaba. Sí. Eh, Con una parte, pero se me puso un asterisco rojo. Nada más quiero saber cómo darlo. Or, ¿Estás en tu computadora en la que están conectados al, al WebEx para que me la enseñes o, o no me la pueden enseñar? ¿Te puedo decir no? parte? Ah, dime el número. Ah. ¿En dónde estás? ¿En dónde estás? ¿En el contrato? Ah. En el... Estoy en el en de los requerimientos en la 0244. Oh. Ajá. 
Esta parte. Estoy proyectando. No sé si te acceso. Tengo que compartir. Déjame comparto mi. Ah, espérame. Yo te tengo que dar. Eh, te tengo que asignar. Te tengo que hacer presentar. Eh, Michelle, ¿sí? Sí. A ver, ser como presentador y ya me puedes enseñar tú tu desktop. Ya nos puedes enseñar tu desktop. ¿Y ya viste asignar? Listo. Ok. Voy a compartir mi... Y por eso, yo pensé que... No pasé lo de... Ok, ¿cuál es el asterisco que me decía? Ah, ok. ¿El disco ya lo tenías o te lo puso apenas? No, ya no hice. Recién. A ver, ¿puedes no, entrar, tenía... por favor? Entra con uno. ¿Qué, ¿Qué hiciste? ¿Integraste algún...? ¿Le pido o qué hiciste? ¿En? Eh, entre con y luego le piqué nada. A ver. No, cinco. A ver. Y luego le puse F4. Ajá. Y fue donde le metí, pero no sé bien. A ver, regresa con F1. I must be very honest. I cannot tell you what this what this uh, red star means. Yes, but I will write it down and I will let you know in next session. Yes, I have never seen it. I I have to find out what this means. Okay. What is about this? I don't know if if your colleagues, someone in the U.S. knows what this this um red um star means. So my God, and I, I must be honest, I've never seen it. Uh, I believe the star is only used for Rao in I know we do that for Honda. Honda star okay. I have no idea what this what this uh, star means, you know, because this is a four contract. Uh, do you know what this means with Honda? I might want to ask. Christy, yes, that's quick. what I was thinking. I have just uh, done a, a screenshot of the um, screen, and then I will email it to her. Uh, she might be able to tell us what this means session. because, yes, I, I am honest. I have never seen it. So, and I will let you know next session, yes? Yeah, I think... With my Honda, it's one of my showers. Well, you. you can do it like this. So, do you miss something else in the screen? Esa pregunta? Sí, es la única duda. Ok, entonces ya voy a regresarlo a mi desktop, ¿sí? Are we going to see uh, production scheduling? For example, we just had a, um, an Audi audit. Customer requirement that we are putting scheduling in the system. If you can consider it just to show us uh, a couple of screens where we can do our scheduling. Wait, I was not paying completely attention. What was the question? You would like to see what? Uh, I'll ask Brian if there's no yes. 
screen so for the menu for production scheduling. For production, for production, we have also something kind, some kind of mailbox yet, where um, you get proposals for the production. But I, I don't really know how you work in production, and production is not my, my, um, my model. Yes, I am working mainly with sales and with purchasing. But I know there is a mailbox where you receive. You receive proposals for the production, and according to the setup of the system, these proposals are coming directly from the customer's requirements. Um, and of course, after MRP is running and he knows what you have in the stock, and if you have maybe a scrap percentage in your master data and so on, then he will tell you, okay, this is your um, requirement and this is your net requirement. This is what you need, but I can show you. In the system, yes. Brian, this is uh, the last part of the session that at uh, the round four, I guess that was, where um, uh, there were uh, some production uh, and um, RP and this kind of topics in the list. Where someone else will have to handle that? Is that what you're yes. I will check it out, yes. And, and Michelle, um, you will get uh, more training. List that what was um, talked, uh, also regarding to production and MRP and calculation and planning for the production. Yes, I would. Um, I will check it again. Yes, um, because I guess you have got no information of planning. But as I've talked about beginning only with round one and two. That's why. But I'll check it. Yes, and we'll let you know. I would, Michelle. I would talk to I go through Chris Terry and ask him who in Coral Springs, USA. You could speak with, and they may have work instructions already for production planning. Okay. I'm real familiar with that. They usually don't. Uh, well, I um, it's, um, this is sort of like the favor is. Can Ida get her hands on some sort of like um, manual for just a production schedule so she can share with us? What it is, we've been doing uh, this MRP or this green bean uh, for probably 12 years, and we've been it tried to fit me. So I think whatever Edith would have may or may not. But it may cause more problems because we've modified since then. Okay. Um, hey, Michelle. Yes. Um, Chris Holt is one of production planners here. Uh -huh. um, I can send you his contact information. And if you want to maybe get with him or call him or send him some questions or something like that, or maybe we can have a conference call with him and you can maybe give him an outline of some of the things that you have issues or questions about, he can maybe touch base with you on that. Okay. 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 Yeah, we just, we just want to review the screens on XPPS because we have to come up with a work instruction to comply with this, uh, some of is that we're having we're getting penalized for not doing our scheduling through the system. Okay. And we might not keep I mean we might use the system, but we need to have like a work instruction and know how it works in the system at least. Sure. Okay. I'll get with them and and he can get in touch with you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. So uh, <clears throat> I have seen something that I forgot to mention when we were talking about the, the orders entry manually or EDI, yes. When you get an order EDI, you get a cumulative number here, yes. And if it's not matching, you can do an adjustment in this screen with F15, yes, which is Shift F3. With F7, you can compare the cumulative number, yes? And here you could type in, for example, if the customer is saying my cumulative is 130, 
and your cumulative in the system is 100, you could change it here. And of course, as a remark, why you change it this way? Because this is not only change it, but but you have to to support why it was changed. So, yes. so I show you again. We are in the manual entry or in the in the entry of the order, and here we shift F3 and F7 here. You can change the cumulative number of your um, requirements. Okay. So questions. I I am ready for today with the um, EI mailbox and the display of the customer order. Information is helpful for you and that you are able now to work a little bit more and better with your mailbox. Yes, try to to have a look at that and check what is not used anymore. You can just erase it with a number four, but for check really what you need and what you don't need so that you try. The objective is that your mailbox is really consequently um, processed and empty. Yes, week or I don't know how often you get your releases. Yes, but, but to check what's behind all these records in the EDM mailbox. So if it was useful, if there's anything you would like to know, let me know. If any other questions for today? Or rec or suggestion. Okay, that's good. good. Um, Edith, if, if, when you send me the recording, can you also send me the documentation that you, you've uh, touched? I need this documentation that I showed today. This is a very big one because this is explaining everything about the EDI and uh, the communication and those things, but might be uh, anyway helpful for you, yes. It's also um, a manual for release three, but most things are the same, yes. If there's something that you don't file and something, then you can ask me, might be because it was new in, in release three, but mostly the documentation will help you to go further, yes. I can send it to you. Thank you. So, um, can we talk later, Brian? I I need to talk to you um, about the next session. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we talk here. Yes. So I would say now we are finished for today. Tomorrow we have our session. Let Let's say what time is it for tomorrow, so that we don't misunderstanding. Eleven to two p.m. Is that correct? So that's go at 10. Wait, are, are, aren't we behind? Yes, we are. Okay, it's 10 in the morning for Mexico, 11 for you in the U.S. Or you one hour later? Like. Oh. What do you think tomorrow's session will be? It will be like two hours.